everybody welcome to the channel my name is Matt and this is the gaming corner now today we are going to be talking about the Retron 5 that I got sitting over here now that was something I got for my birthday and I've been loving the hell out of it I'm really enjoying it uh, there's a lot of features on the Retron 5 that I find to be really great like how it saves games and stuff and you know I can save my high scores in games that I'm doing I really love that one of the big things about the Retron 5 is it is an emulator. It is not an actual, you know, console type idea. It's not like um, running your Genesis or anything like that. It is an emulator. It does pull the ROMs off of the cartridge, puts them onto a memory card it has inside of here. Doesn't keep them in there, so when you shut it down, it does remove it. But that's pretty much what goes on with that. And I've been playing a lot of games using... The wireless controller is like this one from Retrobit and that. And I normally keep the wireless controllers on there. But I've been doing a lot of playing games using my third-party controllers. And I decided to, since this thing is an emulator, to take a game that I have massive issues with when it comes to any of these newer third-party controllers. And that is Mortal Kombat 1. Every one of these controllers... On this game, the original Mortal Kombat 1, even on the Mortal Kombat 1 Arcade Edition, RAM Hack does the same problem. The C and the Z button are extremely delayed. So I'm like, you know, the Retron here is a emulator technically. Let's see if it works any better. So I got to turn back on my controller here because it is off at the moment. And let me minimize my face a little bit or slide it off to the side. All right, so as you can see, I do have the Retron up already. Mortal Kombat is in, so we're going to hit start. I'm not going to input the blood code right now into Mortal Kombat, so we're not going to put that in, but we're going to go ahead and play this. Now, I am having some sound issues again right now. Um, my sound started messing up, so I had to do a little bit of fixing on that. So the sound you hear will be coming from the microphone, coming back up and through. You know, I have the blood coat inside the box here. I just don't feel like looking it up, and I don't have it memorized anymore. So we are going to skip putting the blood in for now. But there's a reason why I'm doing this video with this controller. Now, Sega made six-button controllers for these games. And if you play Mortal Kombat 1 on your Genesis, it can use a six-button controller. I am a wimp, so I'm going to set this to easy, or very easy. Now, I can't change anything in the options here. I can't go and set up the six-button controller, so whatever. But let's go into the game here. I'm going to use my favorite, Scorpion. And now, here's the issue. Watch this. I'm going to hit X for high punch. Nothing. Y for block, nothing. Z for high kick, nothing. That's been with every third-party controller I've used so far. Lucky enough, Mortal Kombat 1 is easy enough to play with only the three buttons. So, that's not a big deal. But yeah, Mortal Kombat 1, for some odd reason, doesn't like the six-button controllers on this thing. It acts like it's a three-button no matter what I do. I've had controllers that are plug in that are not wireless. Same thing. Only thing I haven't tried was an actual Genesis one, which I got a reason why I don't like using my real Genesis controllers on the Retrons. Um, they have actually, I'm not going to say they've killed Genesis controllers yet, but they have killed the Retro Bit controllers. I originally had two of these ones, uh, bought the adapters for both because this is the Bluetooth one. It killed one of the Bluetooth adapters. The Retron, the Retron HD, the one for the Genesis itself, it killed the Bluetooth controller. I've also had a couple of the other ones that are 2.4 gigs. It's killed those. I don't know exactly how. And it's killed other third-party controllers. And believe it or not, they're all from Retrobit. The Retron... Um, I can't think while I'm playing this game right now. The Retron consoles have killed a lot of the third-party 
retro bit controllers on me. And that's been Nintendo style everything. So I'm actually not buying any more retro bit controllers. I've had enough of them. They are dying way too easily. But yeah, so as you can see, you know, I can only use three buttons. I know you can't see the controller because I got it down lower, but yeah, only three buttons work here. Whoop. So used to using the other block button. But all right, I'm going to continue playing this game for a bit and see how far I can get because I want to put my high score in. But we'll be back and we're going to check out, once I come back, Mortal Kombat 2. We're going to check out that one next. That one allows you to set it for a six button controller. I want to see if this gets picked up properly. So we'll be right back with that. All right, so coming back in here for just a minute, I need to show something. This is an easy way to beat Shang Tsung on Mortal Kombat 1 on the Genesis and even on the Sega CD. So this is a way to beat it easily. I'm gonna return the game. So all you gotta do is you hold down and you low kick. Keep holding down though and watch what happens here. Shang Tsung would do the same thing on the Sega CD that he's gonna do here. As you see, I just got a flawless victory too. Now watch. Hold down. And kick. As long as you time the kicks right, Shang Tsung never changes. And you get the double flawless victory on Shang Tsung. Or Shang Tooms or Sums or whatever the hell his name is. And as you can see, very easy to do. And yes, this does work on the Sega CD also. Alright, so now we are moving over to Mortal Kombat 2. You see, I got the game in. It's already on the Sega logo. And we are still going to be using the retro bit controller. Now, in Mortal Kombat 2, even when it was on the Genesis, you had to go into the options to set it to play as a 6 button. So let's jump into the game and see what happens. Alright, so we're going to jump into the options. 6 button, activator. Alright, we're going with 6 button. I'm going to put both on 6. Done. Now, you saw I set it for 6 buttons. Let's see what happens here. We're going to try high punch once we get into the game. And I'm going to show it on up here. I'm going to be pushing the X button. I got nothing. 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 Yeah. Does not work. So is it an issue with this controller? Or is it an issue with the Retron 5? I am not sure. We're going to pop in the next game, which is going to be Mortal Kombat 3, and see if it works on that one. Let's go to options. Joystick. So according to this... It's reading this as a six button controller. Let's see what happens when we jump in the game, shall we? Nope. So is it the Retron controller? The, ret the Retro Bit controller? Or is it something else? All right, so here we are inside Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. And just like regular Mortal Kombat 3, as you can see, it does show a six button controller. And I'm still using this one right away. Here we go. X, X, X. Nothing. So, again, nothing from the six-button controller. Okay, we are going to give a shot with the actual Hyperkin controller that they make and see if we get a better result. All right, let's get into the game here and hang on. Neat. Time to hit the X button. Still nothing. Interesting. Even while holding it down, nothing. All right, for the last thing to try, we are going to go with an actual Genesis controller. All right, so the Genesis one works. Why didn't any of the other ones work? That is a good question. All right, so in conclusion here, so I went over... All of my retro bit controllers that I that I still own. I have plug-in ones that are wired, I have wireless, and that. And I am coming up to the same conclusion with all these. Um, they just suck on the Retron 5. Now I've been having a lot of issues with these controllers anyways, so that could be part of it. I was gonna test out my 8-bit do controller on here, 
but unfortunately I don't remember where I set it down at, at the moment so can't really test that yet I normally use the 8-bit dough or do because it's not dough it's do um, I usually use it on my actual Genesis most of the time so it's probably sitting someplace over by my TV I just need to find out where the heck I set it down at so when I do find that one I will redo the test real quick and just see how that one works on it the only controller that worked perfectly was the Sega Genesis controller. The official Sega Genesis controller worked fine. I even tried an actual controller from Hyperkin on there. That too did not register as an actual six button controller, only as a three button. So, good question on why that all is, I don't know. On the Retron HD that I have that is made for a Genesis, they all work fine. It's just on this one they don't. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. But other than that, that is where this video is going to end for right now. I do appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you in the next video. And I'll let you know what I figured out on some other controllers as I test out more. Thank you for watching.